All right. In this video, we're going to be talking about putting solar on your Cybertruck. This project is a 1.0, so there's going to be future iterations. The system is 100% functional, but needs to be expanded. I'll go through the list, the parts, and the procedure on how to make this. I'll go through the issues with this system. I'll go through what the next steps are, and I'll talk about the alternatives. The motivation for this video was the overwhelming attention I received while driving around. I've been handing out my number and have been fielding a lot of texts and calls, answering all sorts of questions. So I'm hoping this helps motivate some and deter others. Plus, the Now You Know channel by Zach and Jesse, who you should totally follow, motivated this video. Remember to send them in to us at hello at now you know channel.com. What do we got today? Rick spotted a Cybertruck with what looks like a camper that has maybe solar panels on the side. Oh, we need more. I need to know more about that. Find him. <laughs> I feel I have to put a disclaimer. I've paid full price for all these things, and the companies have not paid, do not know, or incentivize me to make this video. So I'm going to be completely unbiased. I've thrown links down below if you'd like anything but I don't care if you use them or not. Okay, the number one question everyone asks, why did I do this? Well, the reason, because there's no extended range battery anymore that's coming for the Cybertruck. We're left all alone to fend for ourselves now if we want additional range, if we want to tow anything, drive far away from civilization. This is literally the only complaint I have with the Cybertruck. The truck is amazing other than the range. So this is my way of contributing to the community to see if we can get a really good system out there. This is just going to be iteration one, but I hope I bring up some good points and shorten some learning curves for others. Now let's get into it. I'll quickly give you an overview of the major system components. It consists of one 430 watt panel so far, measuring 44.5 inches by 67 and three quarter inches, mounted to a Mars full expedition rack system. An EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra whole home battery backup system with one battery pack and one inverter. A Tesla Roddy L-Track Molly bed cargo shelf. A Tesla mobile connector with adapters. Now that you know more or less the parts, let's talk about the big issue with the system and with any and every solar system you're going to be connecting to the Cybertruck. The way myself and most others when first designing the system want to set it up is so the EcoFlow battery is the buffer in the middle of the truck and the solar panel. Ideally, you would like the solar coming in to match the output going into the truck. That way you can have a steady flow of electrons all day. And when the sun goes down, the EcoFlow will dump the remaining electricity into the truck, emptying itself. This method is the preferred method because it requires a little to no interaction. You would check it in the morning, let your battery charge up a little bit for a buffer, then turn on your charger and match the incoming watts with the outgoing watts. Sit back and let your truck charge all day. Unfortunately, this is not possible. You see there's a draw on the system. When we set the Tesla mobile connector to its lowest level, the mileage will actually go down. This clip of three different screenshots shows 5.22 p.m., 9.31 p.m., and 4.19 a.m., with the mileage actually getting lower that night and into the morning. It's not until we increase the charge to 7 amps do we see the mileage start counting back up. This means we have over a 600 watt draw on the system. And this is where I have to assume something. I'm assuming that it's taking the 600 watts and heating the truck batteries, getting them ready for a large rapid charge. But because we are trickle charging the truck battery, it is probably not necessary. So our preferred method of charging the Cybertruck all day is not possible because the first six to 700 watts is going to heating the battery. Now, unless you have a gigantic solar system, this method is out the window. Our plan B option is to charge up the EcoFlow battery all the way and rapidly dump the power into the Cybertruck so you're heating the battery as little as possible. Unfortunately, it's unknown how much power would still be lost to heat the battery for the 30 minutes it would take to transfer that much power. Not only is it not ideal, but now you are monitoring the state of the EcoFlow and when it gets full, you have to dump the power at peak 
all the way to between 10 to 0%. Turn it off and repeat the process. Not only is it hard on the EcoFlow lithium iron phosphate batteries, but now you are tethered to the truck, constantly charging and dumping. You can slightly remedy this with just buying a larger battery, capable of storing the energy from a full day's charge. But that gets bulky and expensive fast. I plan to have three panels plus a mobile fourth for long-term off-grid. With that setup, I could need almost 10 kilowatts hours of battery storage. You can see the problem we are facing here. Instead of just investing in some solar panels, we are now forced to fill our Cybertrucks with batteries. Now I'm hoping this is just software and can be fixed with an update. I see no reason to heat the batteries if you are below a certain threshold of wattage going into the truck and ambient temperature is nominal. You will not be able to reproduce this with your Tesla home wall charger. Setting it to 5 amps is different than 5 amps on a mobile charger because your home charger is 240 volts and the mobile charger is 120 volts. So you're getting twice the wattage out of your wall charger. It would be equivalent to 10 amps on the mobile charger. If you're still interested in the system, I'll now go through each piece. We'll start with the rack. The one I chose is made by Mars, and I made a video on it already, so go watch that. It's expensive, but worth it. I acquired a discount link if you're serious about buying one, linked in the description, but I paid full price for mine. After looking online for a while for the perfect solar panel dimensions and failing, I landed on this panel. It's the closest I could find and American made. It's not quite wide enough to fill the rack completely, so I added black 4080 extruded aluminum about 2,000 millimeters long. That's the extruded aluminum, but it's pretty close. It hangs over a little bit over the edge, but you have most of your bed space still available. This is only a single panel right now, so it's not that crucial that you have an optimizer so you can just run home run all the way to a battery unit and it'll be fine when i get into 2.0 and 3.0 of the system i'm going to have another panel here that's coming out and then a panel on top that's coming out the other way then i will definitely need optimizers because when they're retracted the way it's probably going to be wired hopefully in series we'll see so you're going to need these optimizers when you do have three panels because two are going to be shaded all the time. And so that's what an optimizer is for, is if you have some panels in the shade. So they're gonna bypass the shaded panels and just continue to use the panel in the sun. So you have to buy a couple of these guys. Let's talk about running the cables. Um, I'll put up a picture on the screen. The first cable is the easiest. Cable routing is not gonna be a problem. I made a little bracket here. It's not gonna be difficult to attach some, uh, attach some MC4 connectors. And then you're gonna, you may have to notch this piece of plastic a little bit. You're gonna have to pop this whole piece of top plastic off, run the cable behind the vault track here on the other side of it, and then it'll pop out down below. And then you'll have full access to cables anywhere in your bed. I'm not sure you can see it. It's not all the way into the corner, it's up high. Another thing I had to do, this shelf is pretty strong for average things. A gigantic battery and an inverter system is not average. So what you're gonna have to do is resupport it. This looks like it's quarter inch aluminum by one, front and back, bolted all the way across. And it is strong enough to support multiple people now. We're gonna talk battery for a minute. The way this is set up, we want the most amps as fast as possible because of this battery drain. So we're gonna go with this 30 amp plug with the adapter. We have the mobile connector by Tesla. It comes over here and you're just gonna reach it over and plug it in when you're ready to go. All right, we have to talk about the grounding plug. The way Teslas work, they wanna make sure you have a ground because we are not grounded and plugged into a home it will not work until you have a special grounding plug that bonds the neutral and the ground together. You're only going to use this if you're not plugged in to a home to charge this battery system. This is only for mobile applications. You do not want to bond these two if you're going to be plugging this unit and charging it up at home. When you're on the road, the 
test the mobile connector will not work without this little guy. It will throw an error. You plug this thing in, it jumps neutral to ground, and it will work fine. We have to talk about this special plug. Because these two units are not stacked, they have a small, they come with a small connector that jumps the two together on the side. But now I've laid them on the side so you have to buy an extra cable. It's a longer cable and jump the two together. It's just the way it is. It works fine. It's a little expensive, but it is what it is. And when you've been charging all day, you're gonna take this guy, plug it in, prop it up here, and the vault cover will close and pinch the cable between the tailgate and the gasket on that. So there's plenty of room. And if there is ever rain, it should just drip down right here to the ground. Hasn't been a problem so far. If this battery system doesn't end up working the way I want it to in the end, and if I do end up keeping it, this 12 volt port right here has 30 amps so it could be utilized for a lot because whatever power you need you have to convert the 48 volts dc to 12 volts dc for basically i don't know radios lights anything off the shelf is still going to be sold in 12 volts so you could run this port everywhere and have 12 volts throughout your whole truck with 30 amps that's pretty good i don't think you run a winch off of that but everything else you probably could okay now that we know about the current system, let's talk about some alternatives. Because I'm maxed out on space now, I need to start looking for something more commercial if I plan to expand. Rack mount batteries are an excellent choice. They stack well, are compact, and infinitely expandable. You'll need to do a bit more work to make these things strong enough to be driven over bumpy roads though. And if you want more of a plug and play option, there is the Dart Solar setup. It doesn't exist yet except for on their concept car. They do say they're going to deliver at the end of 2025. This setup is more of what I was going for with my panels, where one panel slides underneath and one panel slides on top. Mine will be slightly larger, but a lot more work. All right, let's put a bow on this thing. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. The rack definitely, it's a game changer. It really opens up the capabilities of this truck. The solar, I'm happy with so far. The fixed panel's nice. Hopefully the next two sliding panels will work out. The battery, maybe. It's a little too early to tell. It all depends on if Tesla fixes their battery heating issue. I'm going camping for two weeks, so I'll know more after I put the system through its paces. So, to answer the question, is it worth it? The answer is, like it almost always is, it depends. Are you expecting to get real range out of this? Then probably not. If you're using this to power coolers, power tools, lights, and to prevent drain down from sentry mode, then yeah, probably. As like most of you, I'd rather be building than posting, but I understand sharing is important. I'm just starting this YouTube thing, so videos will be slow, but I'll show my progress when I can. And if you have questions, throw them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. And remember, the complainer curses the storm, the builder harnesses the rain.